looking back at our first couple of cruises, it still pains us how many cruise mistakes we actually made. Well, to help you from making the same bloopers, we've compiled this list of 21 cruise mistakes we still see cruisers making, plus simple ways you can avoid making them on your next cruise, up next. Welcome aboard cruisers, and a special welcome back to those Eat Sleep Cruise subscribers. Now we've all made mistakes, whether we like to admit it or not. So we put together this video to help ensure your next cruise is smooth sailing. One of the easiest cruise mistakes you can avoid for your next trip is booking your cruise too late. The sad truth is that many individuals do overpay for their cruise. This is especially true for some of the larger, newer ships. We often recommend you secure your cruise at least eight months in advance. While you hear a lot of websites touting last minute deals, the reality is most of the in-demand cruise ships and destinations fill fast. We always book early, and in our over 65 plus cruises, there's only been one time we saw our cruise fare drop. Most times, the cruise fares creep up a few hundred dollars per passenger as you get closer to the sail date. Each cruise line offers a slightly different style and approach to cruising. While most try to appeal to both families and couples, some cruise lines are just better suited for certain types of travelers. So there's really no excuse for making the mistake of picking the wrong cruise ship or a cruise line for your next voyage. Families with younger children may prefer a Carnival Cruise Line or Disney Cruise Line if you're fans of Disney Entertainment and can afford the inflated prices. Families with older children or multi-generational parties might prefer something like Royal Caribbean or Norwegian Cruise Line. There are adult-only cruises like Virgin Voyages where no kids are allowed. Do some basic research first before picking a cruise line or a cruise ship, and you'll get plenty of information on the line's overall vibe. Also remember that within Cruise Line, there are several classes of ships that offer different amenities, restaurants, and entertainment options. So all the flashy bells and whistles you see in the TV commercial may not necessarily be on that particular ship. We like to think there's a cruise ship out there for everyone, so just do a little homework before picking one. Luckily, back on our blog or here on YouTube, we have tons of cruise ship reviews. That way, we can help you decide which cruise ship is right for you. Same can be said about picking the wrong type of cabin. One of the biggest mistakes is selecting a cabin and not realizing what the accommodations will be like once on board. Cruise ship staterooms are certainly different than hotel rooms. They tend to be smaller and designed for efficiency rather than style. Again, Cruise Line's websites provide details, including dimensions for all stateroom categories. Many include photos and virtual tours. A good travel advisor too can also help wade through the differences between the cabin types. Your cabin type will be the number one driver of the overall total cruise cost. Certain locations like upper decks or cabins in the middle of the ship do cost more money. Of course, larger cabins and those with more desirable views also cost more money. For those new to cruising, we highly suggest you consider booking an ocean view stateroom or higher to allow for a view to the outdoors just in case you get claustrophobic. The reason we cruise so much is that we think cruise vacations are an amazing value. For one set cruise fare, you have access to several dining venues, activities, onboard amenities, and entertainment. Still, you do need to keep in mind that not everything is included in the price of your cruise. Most mainstream cruise lines include most dining and a small array of beverages. Many of these popular lines, like Royal Caribbean and Carnival Cruise Line, do not include items such as soft drinks, lattes, or alcoholic beverages in their cruise fare. Other amenities may or may not be included on that particular vessel. For instance, many cruise ships have sports courts, water slides and aqua parks, rope courses, mini golf, and other outdoor activities that are free of charge. Other options like go-karts, 3D ride simulators, dinner theaters, and bowling are usually an upcharge. You can easily avoid sticker shock by just reviewing what's included and not on your cruise line's website and then budgeting accordingly. I completely admit that we are over planners. However, one huge cruise mistake you need to avoid is waiting till you get on board your cruise ship to make any reservations. This is true for add-ons like drink packages, specialty dining, or other additional upcharges or packages. Almost always these particular add-ons are cheaper pre-cruise 
and you can purchase them online in your cruise planner. Likewise, shore excursions and tours are something you definitely want to book before you set sail. Popular tours sell out quickly, especially if your cruise is during peak vacation times, like the holidays or summer vacation. You don't need to necessarily book with the cruise line, as there are also local tour operators and third-party retailers that also offer shore excursions. Further, some cruise lines allow you to book entertainment reservations pre-cruise, while others require you to do so as soon as you board the ship. Popular show times do fill up quickly, so we suggest you reserve these as soon as they become available. Once you've booked your cruise, you should download the Cruise Lines app. This is going to come in handy both before and during your cruise. Yes, you need the app even if you don't plan on purchasing onboard internet. About 30 to 45 days before your cruise, Cruise Line will require you to complete your online check-in. Don't make the mistake of waiting till the last minute to do your online check-in. You should do this as soon as possible. Doing your check-in early will give you the earliest port arrival time. That way, you can be among the first cruisers on the ship. The check-in process usually requires you to complete some basic information about your travel party, as well as set up an account for onboard spending. Many cruise lines even let you load your security photo and complete a required health questionnaire in the app the day before the cruise. Completing this check-in will help you bypass the lines on cruise boarding day and let you glide right through the terminal and straight onto the cruise ship. If you're thinking about taking the first flight of the day, the morning of your cruise, well, think again. One of the biggest blunders you can make is not appropriately arranging your transportation to and from the cruise ship, especially if you're flying from a region where weather could impact your plans. We don't necessarily live in a cruise-friendly region, the northeast part of the United States. So we almost always need to fly to get to our cruise embarkation point. So we always bucket additional travel time to ensure we're at the home port at least a day early. And we recommend you do the same. For starters, you won't be rushing around the day of your cruise. Plus, it's a safer bet that you won't miss a ship because of travel disruptions and delays. Likewise, when disembarking the ship, don't make the mistake of planning a flight that's too early in the morning. Most cruise ships are clear between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. on disembarkation day, and depending how far away the airport is, you shouldn't book your flights home any earlier than 11 a.m. to noon for domestic flights, or early afternoon to later in the day for international flights. When you did your online check-in, the cruise line will assign you an embarkation arrival time. Make sure to stick to that time. If you took our advice already, then you're all set. The check-in process starts around 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Most cruise lines start allowing guests on the ship between 11 a.m. and noon, again, depending on the region and the cruise line. But if you have a 1 p.m. arrival time, getting to the pier at 11 a.m. will not help. At best, you'll be asked to stand in a separate overflow line. So don't make the mistake of getting to the cruise terminal too early as that usually doesn't help you get on the ship any sooner. Now, on the other hand, you don't want to get to the port too late. Most cruise lines stop processing guests between 3 and 4 p.m., depending on when sail away is. So if you're delayed getting to the port, you could miss the ship entirely. Again, why we highly recommend flying in a day early, it increases the likelihood of you getting to the port on time and not missing the ship. The cruise lines have done a great job of going paperless. With the Cruise Lines app, you can access your boarding pass, reservations, onboard activity schedule, and more. However, there's one essential item in your cruise you'll need a hard copy of to board the vessel, and that's your passport. It is true there are several cruises you can take without a passport, but for getting this document or other acceptable forms of ID, we'll resell in a missed cruise. We're all human. So double check, triple check your carry-on and personal belongings to ensure you have this required documentation before heading to the pier. Not doing so could be a very costly mistake. When it comes to handling your luggage on a cruise, one mistake you don't wanna make is not checking some of your luggage. Even if you're taking a three or four day cruise and you each have small carry-ons or smaller suitcases, much easier to check those with a porter at embarkation. Odds are your room will not be ready when you get on board the ship and you'll have to lug your luggage around all morning and early afternoon with you until your rooms are ready. Let's just say that's less than desirable. 
also makes navigating the ship more difficult for other cruisers. Now on the flip side, we never recommend checking all of your luggage on embarkation day. You definitely need a cruise carry-on when boarding the ship. This carry-on can be a tote bag, a backpack, or even a small piece of luggage. But regardless of the type of luggage it is, we want to make sure you include necessary documentation, a refillable water bottle, electronic devices and chargers, a bathing suit, and perhaps some toiletries, sunglasses, sunscreen, and more. It's important to remember that you won't see your bags that you check with the porter for a few hours. Once on board the ship with this well-stocked carry-on, you'll be ready to have a great time. However, in this carry-on, you want to make sure you don't bring on any prohibited items. For us, we always get a chuckle when we walk by the table of collected contraband. Among the collections are bottles of liquor, power strips, a random assortment of electronics like tea kettles or irons, and steamers. These, among others, are items most cruise lines do not allow you to bring on the ship. Other banned items include things such as illegal substances, firearms, candles, and other items. Thankfully, you can find a long list of these things not allowed on your cruise ship on the cruise line's website. Plus, just use some common sense when packing. Regardless of your state laws, all cruise lines abide by federal regulations. Some cruise lines do let cruisers bring items like approved power outlets or two 750 milliliter bottles of wine or champagne. These do need to be in your carry-on during check-in. Trying to sneak something on at best will be confiscated. At worst, it can be grounds for removal from the ship. While many places across the globe do accept credit cards or digital payments, you'll still want to have cash on hand for several reasons. One crucial mistake we've seen often, and even our own family has made in the past, is not having enough small bills or any cash on hand during the cruise. You'll want some cash to make small purchases while short shops and local markets. Cash also comes in handy for things like taxis, butter tip guides, and shore excursion hosts during your times at ports of call. While all purchases on board are tied to your credit card, you might still want cash to tip bartenders and servers, wait staff, or your stateroom attendant. Of course, this is above the daily service charge, which we often prepay, and it's typically around $15 or $16 per person per day. For reference, we usually have around $200 or more for a typical seven day cruise, and this does not include any funds that we may reserve for gaming in the casino. Just to be 100% honest, in 2023, there's no excuse for skipping your muster drill. For the most part, many cruise lines now have instituted a digital muster, also known as an e-muster. So cruisers have more flexibility completing this required safety training. This often involves watching a recorded safety briefing on the cruise lines app or your stateroom television. Then cruisers can check in at their assigned assembly station. The stations usually open for a number of hours. In here, crew will review a few of the most important aspects of the drill and show you how to put on your life vests. This only takes a few minutes and then you can enjoy the rest of your embarkation day. So we recommend doing your mustard drill as soon as possible once you board the ship. If you're one of the rare cruise lines that has a traditional in-person muster, make sure you know when and where you need to be for this drill. And again, get it done as soon as possible so you can go back to enjoying the rest of your cruise. Knowing exactly what to pack for your cruise is a bit experience and a bit luck. Still, odds are there are several items in your suitcase right now that you will not use. Do you really need three different outfits for each day or a new pair of shoes for every evening? When packing for your cruise, try to find items that are multi-purpose or materials designed for travel. These are often lightweight, water-resistant garments that can be repurposed a couple times on a trip. Thus, you can still look fashionable without packing your entire closet. For cold water cruises, layers will be essential, but you can often leave large coats and boots at home. We have several packing lists on our website at eatsleepcruise.com to help you determine what you really need for your next trip. Not to mention that several cruise lines actually have laundry services on board. 
Whether it's free or a few dollars, this allows you to do a load of laundry midway through your cruise, saving you plenty of luggage space and baggage fees. Martin cruise ships offer several dining options. One mistake cruisers often make, especially new cruisers, is eating exclusively at the ship's buffet. Again, this is when knowing what is included in your cruise comes in handy. For most larger ships, we actually recommend you stay clear of the buffet for most of the cruise. Many mainstream cruise lines have other casual options you can enjoy for breakfast and lunch, so you can avoid the crowds at the buffet. These venues include cafes with sandwiches, pizza parlors, Tex-Mex or burrito shops, burger joints, and other types of venues. At these venues, you can order as much as you care to enjoy as well, so you can indulge wherever you're dining on the ship. Of course, all cruise ships also feature at least one main dining room. We highly recommend you dine at this complimentary option nightly for dinner. In the main dining room, you'll have a wide selection of food options and table service, which is part of the upscale feeling of being on a cruise ship. To us, that sure beats the queues at the buffet. Not to mention, the food quality tends to be a bit better in the main dining room. It is true for an upcharge, most cruise ships feature specialty dining. While these restaurants have cover charges, we often splurge one or two nights of a cruise for a fancy dinner at a steakhouse or a unique restaurant on board the ship because to us, it's worth the additional charges. No matter what, you never want to be a pier runner on your next cruise. Your ship will arrive and depart at a set time at each port of call. This time will vary for each destination, and luckily your cruise line will make several announcements throughout the trip about these times. Plus, your arrival and departure times will be printed on the front of the cruise line's daily magazine or listed in the cruise line app. So there's no excuse for you not knowing when you need to be back on board the ship. So one of the most embarrassing cruise mistakes you can make is missing the ship at a port of call. It will surely be captured and placed all over social media by your fellow cruisers if they see you running down the pier. There are several instances when your ship's time will be different than the local time. So you should put your phone in manual mode and ensure it's set up the ship's time so there's no confusion. This can get even more complicated if your ship is going through several different time zones. Depending on your cruise line, you may change ship time several times throughout the voyage. So you need to pay attention to what ship time is either in your app or again in the magazine and make sure you adjust your watches or other timepieces accordingly. Plus, always give yourself plenty of time to get back to the ship at a port of call, especially if you're doing a private tour or just exploring on your own. If you're worried about missing the ship, you should probably stick to the shore excursions offered by the cruise line. These tours guarantee the ship will not leave without you. Many cruisers will be traveling to somewhere warm and sunny. If this is the case, then make sure to pack plenty of suntan lotion and use it. It never surprises us how many cruisers we see by day three or four sporting a bright red color. Even if you think you tan, still apply the SPF. For Caribbean and Bahamas, we usually use a sunblock at 40 SPF or higher. You want to apply sunblock several times throughout the day, especially if you're swimming or doing active excursions. Honestly, getting sunburn is an easy cruise mistake you can avoid. Another costly mistake you can make is not putting your cell phone in airplane mode. The days when cruisers left their digital devices at home are a thing of the past. So if you have your smartphone, tablet, or other device, make sure to properly set it to ensure that you do not incur unnecessary roaming charges. You'll still be able to use the Cruise Lines app in airplane mode. You can also purchase a cruise ship Wi-Fi package to access the internet, which also works in airplane mode. If your cell phone provider offers international coverage, you can take your phone out of airplane mode while in the ports of call for cellular and data usage. Just make sure you put it back in before you set sail. That way you don't rack up hundreds of dollars of roaming charges while you're out to sea. It always surprises us when we talk to fellow guests and they mention that they didn't know something was happening 
or that they just discovered a certain venue on the ship and it's like day four or five of the cruise. There's no excuse for not knowing what's happening on the ship. Every day of your cruise is a list of activities and events occurring, along with all the staples like trivia, game shows, and pool deck activities. There are often other events like sport competitions, enrichment lectures, cooking or mixology demonstrations, and family-friendly activities throughout the ship. Cruise lines have daily programs which detail all these events. Now, starting in 2023, it is true many cruise lines no longer leave these in your stateroom, but you can still find printed copies of the daily in public areas like the coffee shop or guest services. But honestly, you don't even need to go there looking for it, as the daily schedule is also in the palm of your hand. The cruise line app will list all these activities, plus hours of operation, when bars will open, when what restaurants are open, along with an entertainment schedule and a list of live music and other events. So there's no reason to miss out on any of these activities or events you want to attend. One cruise's mistake that's unacceptable is forgetting about the crew. Throughout your cruise, you'll encounter crew members that go above and beyond to make your trip memorable. Whether it's wait staff at dinner or your stateroom attendant, a bartender, a counselor in the youth center, or anywhere else in the ship. These staff go the extra mile to ensure you're having the best vacation possible. So make sure to show them your appreciation. Of course, a simple thank you is always welcome, though you should also consider providing additional tips to show your gratitude. If your cruise ship has a program where you can nominate outstanding crew, if someone went above and beyond during a cruise, make sure to give them that recognition. You can also call out outstanding staff and crew during the survey that the cruise line will email you when you return home. Either way, the most unforgivable cruise mistake one can make is being rude or disrespectful to the staff. Even if a crew member makes a mistake, we're all human of course, there's no excuse for you to be mean or abusive. If an issue arises, you can bring it up politely or alert guest services who can look into the matter for you. Now that you're armed with all the information you need to make sure you don't make any cruise mistakes on your next voyage, we need to find you the perfect cruise ship. Luckily for you, right here on YouTube, we have our list of the 10 best new cruise ships for 2023. From some amazing new sister ships from cruise lines like Norwegian Cruise Line, Carnival Cruise Line, to brand new cruise lines like Explorer Journeys, and new classes of ship, our picks for the top 10 best new cruise ships of 2023 will help you decide which ship is right for your next cruise vacation.